Listen, I want to start with a sincere congratulations on the movie. Um, I know this couldn't have been an easy project to get made with the financing and everything. Just want to say congrats. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I like throwing a curveball at the beginning. Um, for all three of you, if someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, uh, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? Let's start that way. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, the, besides the inspection, which comes out November 18th. <laughs> uh, um, huh. I guess the first thing I would want them to watch is my documentary, Peer Kids. It's about uh, queer and trans homeless youth in the, uh, Christopher Street in the West Village and how they use public space to find chosen family and to overcome homelessness. I made the movie over five years. I made it literally with, you know, in my dorm room with a camera that I purchased and my own, you know, it, it's literally made from the mud and now it's on PBS and it won a film independent spirit award. So I would, I think if you want to get to know me and where my heart is an artist, that's a really great way to start. Right. Mm. I'm going to piggyback that. If you want to get to know me, you need to watch the inspection because I'm in the season of championing elegance. <laughs> um, and it comes out November 18th <laughs> and I want you all to be in the theater to see it. Yes. So that feels very pressing and special on my heart right now. So I would love to gift member out there to see the inspection. Like an advanced copy? <laughs> right. <laughs> we also have a conversation about piracy. Right. 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 <laughs> no, I think I think for me, um, to to know me, like as an as an individual, you gotta watch Bring It On. That's yeah. that's pretty much me in real life. Yeah. If you wanna know who I am like in, in my soul, uh, you have to watch the documentary Half the Sky. Uh, that we did uh, where we explored, well, my part of it, explored the educational disparities between boys and girls in uh, communist Vietnam. Mm. Uh, that is, that's what's on my soul. That's, that's what I, that's kind of who, more of who I am. Uh, Elegant, I have an individual question for you. Um, what you've obviously done a lot of shorts before, but this is your feature debut, mm -hmm. um, directorial debut. What was it, uh, 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 what was it about this story that said, I want this to be my, feature directorial debut did you ever think it might be something else i was at a point well first of all i get, got to give credit where credit's due my life partner chester Algernon gordon i was at a moment in film school where i had uh i was going to choose between doing uh the feature version of my short walk for me or this film the inspection and chester was just on me to be like listen you need to tell a story that no one else could tell except you and what made it make sense is that you know, before I joined the Marine Corps, my mother kicked me out for being gay. I spent 10 years homeless. During that, from 16 to 25, during that time, I thought I was worthless. I thought I had no value. I thought I didn't mean anything to anyone because my mother told me so my whole life. And then I get to the Marine Corps and I find out I'm valuable because I can protect the person to my left and to my right. That, that empowered me. You know, I, I didn't expect to find that empowerment in that way in boot camp, but I did. And I just feel like in this moment we're living in where things are so polarized between conservative and liberal and Democrat, Republican, male, female, black and white, we need something that can start a conversation between both sides, right? Rather than screaming at one another, what does it look like if we focus on our shared humanity and that human connection? And this film is really, really centered on that. I'm curious for the two of you, what was it like reading the script for the first time? And was this one of these things where you're three pages in and you're like, oh, I'm doing this? Um, I think for me, you know, I read the script and I was fortunate to be able to hop on a Zoom with Elegance right after just to have a conversation. My team had sent it to me just like, we think you should meet this brilliant soul. And that's exactly what he was. He was a special energy. And I'm always looking to work with, you know, creatives that are just doing special and unique work. Um, and that, that's where he was at in his life. And we really just got to have a conversation about what does it mean to be an artist? What does it mean to be a black queer artist? Mm. And how we want to use our voices and our truths and our pain to, to be something bigger for other people, to be that beacon of representation or something that's tangible for someone out there to go, I'm going to be okay. I can also do this. My dreams are valid. I am worthy. I am more than enough. So being able to have that conversation immediately after reading the script was kind of, you know, it was, it just felt like I would, you know, be so blessed to be on that journey with him. And when I, when I got the script, it was to produce and, and to act. And I got the producer part. I got where I could be impactful as a producer because it's a, it's a, the script is a winner. You read things, you're like, sometimes you're like, ah, <laughs> hang on, this one's going to require surgery. And like, and like a whole like slew of writers and a lot of, like a lot of stuff. 
Um, but this, it was like, as as is, was was beautiful. It was a winner. As a producer, I'm like, cha-ching. Uh, but I'm like, now who would I be in this? They're like, the mother. I'm like, ah, don't see it. Um, but Elegance had a confidence in me that I've never had in myself or my ability. And he saw that I, something in me that, that told him that I could pull this off. And because he had so much confidence, I had to figure it out on my, you know, I had to find it within myself. But it started with the words. Um, and a, a lot of times the words are just not there. And from literally page one, you're, you're blown away. Uh, so yeah, mm. but it was, it was a winner from page one. There's a very powerful scene in this movie um, uh, in the third act in a hallway. Uh, and I know um, it must have been a challenging day on set to film that scene. Um, I don't know how much you want to say about it because uh, I'm trying to be guarded with spoilers. Uh, but uh, can you sort of talk about filming that sequence because it's so emotional and it's raw and it feels so honest? Mm. Right. I want to speak about it. Yeah. I think what it is is, you know, this is a very unique filming experience for for I think all of us. Gab's expressing she had to go to a place and dig from something that felt foreign, you know, and I was, you know, making myself available for elegance because this is real pain and this is real, real life events and things that were said to him. So my responsibility was just to show up for him that day, specifically in the hallway, because as he has said, a lot of the things that, you know, Gab was saying were said to him. So I knew that we would just, it needed to be a safe environment. Um, and we needed to be open and we needed to be able to 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 go through that healing in real time together on that day. Um, and I, I'm very proud of that scene. I'm very proud of how Gab showed up um, because we had to hold each other down in a real way. It was it was hard not to want to break down in tears the whole time because you, Jeremy, is is struggling with just the idea of what this means for for French and what this meant to elegance. But I knew that by by us by us going through it, it meant that he went through it. And what that means is he could then leave that piece in that hallway. And he didn't have to carry, you know, the weight of that heaviness, you know, much longer. My last thing real quick, Elians, I, I read that you, uh, uh, you the, the Kate Blanchett test for Jeremy, <laughs> which I found yes. very funny. Can you explain what that test means? Sure, the Kate Blanchett test is, Essentially, if you watch a Kate Blanchett movie, I feel like there's always a scene where it's just her emoting to camera. There's nobody, no other actors. And through her emotions, you can track what she's been through and get a sense of where she's going, right? Can an actor just captivate, right? And Jeremy passes that test in flying colors, the most expressive eyes, the most sensitive soul. You're like my favorite actor, dude. <laughs> Like, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the Kate Blanchett test. On that note, I mean a sincere, uh, sincerely again, congratulations on the movie. And um, I hope you guys have a, a good round of speed dating today. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> have a great day.